Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I got a few messages the last few days where people reported that they get a lot more wither skeletons spawning in nether fortresses that are located in the soul sand valley. So since the 1.16 snapshots, nether fortresses can generate in the old nether biome or nether waste biome now and the soul sand valley biome, while they couldn't generate in the crimson forest and the warped forest. At first I dismissed the reports that wither skeletons would have a higher chance to spawn in a soul sand valley biome inside of a fortress because the biome around the fortress shouldn't have any influence because the fortress has its own spawn table of mobs. You can also check that with carpet mod. It shows you which mobs can spawn in a fortress. So we got the zombie piglin, the blaze, the wizard skeleton, the skeleton and the magma cube as usual and also the chances are the same as in every other fortress. But if you fly around, I definitely get the feeling that we see more fortress mobs than usual. Not in particular wither skeletons, but fortress mobs in general. So it seems like there is some truth to rumor that you get more wither skeletons spawning and nether fortress mobs spawning in a soul sand valley biome fortress. And of course we want to know why. This is when I remembered from a video of two weeks ago that Gars actually only have a really small chance to spawn in the Soul Sand Valley, like in the Nether Waste biome as well. So if we use Carpet Mod and check, as you can see, only 5% of the Gars spawning attempts are successful. And the overwhelming majority of mob spawning attempts in the Soul Sand Valley are Gars spawns. So Gars have a weight of 50, Skeletons a weight of 2, and Enderman a weight of 1. So 50 out of 53 spawn attempts are gas spawning attempts and yeah, most of those would actually fail. So that means if you are in a fortress in the Soul Sand Valley biome, the chance that you actually get mob spawning inside of the fortress is higher because just the, yeah, the majority of spawn attempts outside of it fails. So we basically have perimeter-like conditions which just increases the general number of mobs inside of the fortress. I think the majority of mobs would still spawn outside of the, the fortress in a normal terrain that isn't prepared, since it has a lot more spawning spaces, but the percentage of, of actual mobs inside of the fortress should be higher. So now we have a rumor, a theory that could explain it. Let's also put it to a test. So I'm gonna test it by doing what a normal Minecraft player would do run around in a fortress trying to get wizard skeleton skulls. In order to not be influenced by potential deaths, I'm gonna give myself the regeneration effect so I won't die, but I have standard swords and armor as well. So let's do the test. I'm just gonna equip myself with the armor. Do game mode survival. And let's start it. Of course, I got a smite sword so we can take out the with a skeletons of one hit. And I'm just gonna run around, collect loot for 15 minutes starting now. So in 15 minutes of testing, I got the following materials, almost a stack of nuggets, one gold ingot, rotten flesh, half a stack of blaze rods, and now the important part, two wizard skeleton skulls, but that's a bit random of course. Probably it's better if you look at the amount of coal we get. We've got about one and a half stacks of coal and also some bones. Now let's do the same test in the nether wastes by moon. So I found a comparable fortress of course, it's not exactly the same and the test is not really scientific, but it's just to get a feeling of it. And the first feeling I got from this fortress here, despite having a, like a huge lava lake around, is that there's significantly less mobs inside of the fortress. But yeah, nevertheless, let's do a 15 minute test as well. Everything is so empty in here, so I definitely can notice a difference already. Hello? Anybody home? 
Yeah, all the corridors are completely empty here. So let's also check out the results of this 15 minute test. Started pretty well, the first mob I killed immediately dropped the wizard skeleton skull, but the total amount of coal is only about half a stack. And also the drops which we got from the other mobs are significantly lower. If we compare it again, then we almost got one and a half stacks compared to only half a stack. So it was definitely noticeable that this pl place was a lot less crowded. It was running around and you know, ran into a group of mobs every minute or so and actually was just fighting every single mob I encountered while at the other place it was so crowded and busy I could actually select the mobs I wanted to fight. Um, it was <laughs> definitely a difference night and day between the two places. Um, what I also can say is fighting in this nether fortress was a lot easier since it didn't have the gas shooting at you and the total amount of mobs was a lot lower. So it has some pros and cons. Definitely get a lot more loot in a soul sand valley but it's a lot harder in survival mode. Well this place you get less loot but it's definitely manageable to fight all the mobs. While we only did unscientific tests so far I got some help from efforts who set up an identical flat world with a fortress, basically bounding box, and a normal spawning area around. So why don't you explain what's going on here, methods? Okay, so over on the right side we have a nether fortress bounding box, meaning all the nether fortress mobs will spawn here. And on the left side we just have the normal nether wastes biome. And now we can enable the mob spawning, and then we can use carpet mod spawn tracking and tick warp to exactly tell us how many wither skeletons we get per hour. And then we can repeat the exact same test in a soul sand valley biome, and therefore we can calculate the difference in between both of them. Mm -hmm. And here we got so nether then... wastes and a bit of crimson forest as well, right? But it... that's okay. No, this is all nether wastes. Okay, okay. Okay, okay so let's try it out. mob spawning enabled. And now we're gonna do spawn tracking start. And now okay. we can tick warp the game for one hour. And after one hour, we will come back. Well, one hour in game time. Real time is going to be like five minutes, and then we can tell you the difference. All right, one hour is over, and we got 663 wizard skeletons per hour. Now we're going to do the same test just in a soul sand valley biome. Now we can do the same test in the soul sand valley biome. Let's go for it. So the first thing we should notice is that we get more mobs spawning in the fortress than in the other spawning spaces. Well, it was about the same in the other biome. All right, let's wait one hour. And this time we got 1051 wizard skeletons per hour, so this is now definitely proof of the theory. All right, so what does all of this now mean for normal gameplay? We've already seen that it's more efficient to hunt for wizard skeletons in a normal fortress in a source and valley biome, but what does it mean for farming? So it doesn't really help for a high-end wizard skeleton farm. We have a perfect perimeter, perfect spawning conditions, the complete nether outside of prepared because the actual yeah, spawning mechanism of the the fortress doesn't change but in case you want to start a farm like this one here just some slight um, yeah, spawn proofing of the actual fortress you can get a pretty good farm so I'll just let methods explain this part here okay so here we just buttoned up all of the nether fortress that's outside of it you don't actually have to remove anything of the nether brick like we did here you can just button it all up and then we built a long strip here in the center full of nether brick Right, it was and the farm that Tango Tech on the Hermitcraft exactly. server made first. Yeah. And we improved it slightly, so since I think 114 we can stop all magma cubes from spawning with this carpet layout here. So we got rid of those, to no longer in the farm. And instead of daylight sensors we used the sea pickle, just because it's cheaper. And Finally one of use. <laughs> And uh, in case of the killing area here, we added some little tunnels on the side that actually prevent blazes and skeletons from pathfinding on top of here and being able to see you, because that was one of the downsides of this farm. A blaze could actually walk on top of those hoppers here, see you, and aggro all blazes in the whole area around him. Mm -hmm. And that's already about it, and it should just be about 50% faster than before. Yeah, so let's try it out. So survival mode, 
I'm just gonna run around. The wizard skeletons can see me. And just gonna run towards one end. We can kill them. Okay, we already got a skull. <laughs> and that's it. And then you run towards the other end. The blazes are not supposed to see you. Just gonna get the skeletons on the other side. Yeah, they got new ones spawning. So this farm compared to building it in a nether waste biome should be a lot more efficient. Okay, so let's try it out here. So it's definitely a recommendation to build a farm like this one here in the Soul Sand Valley biome. But for high-end farms, it really doesn't matter that much. Get the next skull. So to sum it up again, in case you find a nether fortress in a soul sand valley biome, we will have a lot more nether fortress mobs inside of those, since gas spawning on the outside fails so often. So this is mostly important info for casual players. They don't want to build a farm or prepare the nether around it. For high-end farms, it still doesn't matter in which biome the nether fortress is. In case you want to build a little farm in a soul sand valley nether fortress, then it's definitely worth it to make the actual fortress around the farm spawn proof because there's like a 20 times higher chance that a mob would spawn there compared to the outside area. So it's perfectly fine just to prepare the fortress and completely ignore the nether around it. You will still get decent rates for a farm like this one here. Here's another tip how you could make a fortress spawn proof in a cheaper way. You could use light sources in order to prevent wizard skeleton spawning, skeleton spawning, blaze spawning, and also zombified piglin spawning. So the only mob that could spawn the fortress now would be the magma cube. Uh, but they have a really low chance to spawn. So they only have a weight of three compared for example the blaze with 10 and so on. So you would make the nether fortress 90% spawn proof by using torches. So this would be the cheaper way in case you don't want to cover every single block in buttons or slabs. Blazes and zombified piglins spawn at a light level of 11 or lower. So that means if you place a row of torches every fifth block like I did it here, you would completely spawn proof the area for those mob types. That's all I got for today. Thanks guys for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.